Inquiry-based learning, or IBL, in science is learning that occurs through practices mirroring what actual scientists do. Students take part in authentic learning scenarios that involve generating curiosity through asking questions, then developing strategies to research and explore the answers to these questions. The inquiry process has students developing their own investigative procedures and is based on students' own interests. Recently, IBL in science has gained momentum and support because this approach has the potential to facilitate more positive students' attitudes towards science and a deeper student understanding of science concepts. In a 2020 literature review of inquiry-based mobile learning in secondary science education, Liu et al. described four levels of inquiry as confirmation, structured, guided, and open. The confirmation and structured inquiries most resemble traditional teacher-led laboratory procedures where students are given the lab purposes and procedures, while the guided and open inquiries are increasingly student-led with greater opportunities for the development of science reasoning skills. Inquiry practices may differ greatly in different contexts, but they are generally iterative approaches involving questioning, exploration, research, experimentation, and reflection. One model that follows this learning cycle approach is the 5E instructional model, a constructivist framework that breaks the inquiry process down into the phases engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. This model provides an effective and flexible framework for teachers to design inquiry-based learning activities and guide students through the inquiry process. Interest in the diverse possibilities of mobile learning is emerging in education, particularly to support inquiry-based approaches, with mobile learning being considered anything supported by handheld technologies. Becker et al. 2020 concede that a blanket statement on how mobile digitized devices can be meaningfully used in the classroom is not possible because of the variety of teaching and learning scenarios and of media and learning applications used. However, several researchers have offered possible benefits and presented evidence on the advantages of using technology, mobile and otherwise, within science inquiry. And it is assumed that data collection and data visualization technologies can be helpful in supporting the inquiry-based learning process in particular. The use of technology in the process of guiding scientific inquiry offers a an organized dialogue to develop the collaborative understanding with peers and or scientists, b a scaffolding for the development of scientific explanations, or c reflection procedures and referral to more open-ended inquiries. When we add mobile devices into the mix, the possibilities for authentic inquiry open to include spaces and times beyond the classroom in different learning contexts. Students can now go to the place where science takes place instead of simulating science within class boundaries. Compared to online computer simulations and traditional in-class laboratory experiments, the portability of mobile devices provides more flexibility for students to select their own experimental variables and explore different models of concepts. Mobile technologies allow real-time data collection that enables students to make immediate connections between the data and the concepts being investigated. Many mobile technologies being developed include adaptive learning capabilities to provide feedback and monitor student progress, or provide platforms through which students can collaborate and communicate. Whereas other devices may simply enable students to gather data, such as pH or temperature, in time-efficient ways. Whether the technologies involved have their own software or whether they are simple sensing devices, an important consideration is that the technologies are not simply added because of their novelty, but are part of carefully considered pedagogical approaches with teacher guidance and support. Huang et al. 2013 state that it is important 
when implementing technology into inquiry to consider whether the technology adds value to the task or whether it creates difficulties for student learning or added pressure in what is known as cognitive load. Becker et al. stressed that the importance of cognitive overload is an essential condition for successful learning and can be managed through instructional design. Wang et al. found that the use of technology may in fact decrease the cognitive load on students as long as the learning activities can be appropriately designed. With so much available technology, mobile apps, and digitized devices, how can educators enable the successful adoption of mLearning for science inquiry? Burden and Kearney, 2016, warn that teachers have a tendency to default to traditional teaching approaches. They provide a framework for mLearning with the components personalized, collaborative, and authentic. Personalization allows student agency. Collaboration draws on the social nature of constructing knowledge and authenticity provides a situated learning context from which students can gain real-world experience, skills, and perspectives. Inexpensive portable microscopes that connect to a smartphone or tablet via a Wi-Fi signal are readily available and inexpensive, and thus accessible to all levels of scientific inquiry. Compared to traditional and various digital stand microscopes, these microscopes go where the curiosity of the student takes them. They are portable, USB rechargeable, have a long-lasting LED light source, and are very easy to learn to use. The microscope I've been using is the SkyBasic Wi-Fi digital microscope, but there are many similar ones available, as well as external lens attachments that turn your smartphone itself into a microscope. For this microscope, students can download the free app, get connected, and start exploring as soon as the microscope is charged. As part of a guided or open inquiry, students can generate questions and develop investigative plans about topics that may be explored through the microscope. The app itself is simple to navigate, with the possibility of taking photos or video at different resolutions and saving them automatically to the device. The images are good quality, but it does take some practice holding the microscope steady while simultaneously taking a photo. Having two or more students collaborate on an inquiry eases any frustrations or cognitive load of handling the technology as students quickly figure out how to work together and take clear photos. When using the microscope, having more than two hands makes coordination more streamlined. The microscope also comes with a foldable stand that can be used to steady the, the scope in some situation. Limitations to the Sky Basic microscope include the video function for fast moving specimens. It might be difficult to follow a moving specimen with the microscope while attempting to keep it in focus. As well, when two or more microscopes are giving off a Wi-Fi signal, this can create confusion and loss of learning time while students figure out which Wi-Fi signal to connect to. This is easily solved with simple labels on each microscope with the Wi-Fi identifier. A major difference between these microscopes and the traditional compound microscopes is that their, micro their magnification is not readily known. The Wi-Fi microscope's magnification range is purportedly 1,000 times but there's no quick and easy way to tell where in that range the image may fall. A traditional microscope's magnification can be easily discerned by multiplying the ocular and objective lens magnifications. As you can see, I have the portable microscope set up on a stand and some specimens that I might wanna look at. And to turn it on, we just press the power button and the lights come on, that tells us it's working and it's giving off a Wi-Fi signal. So then I can go over to my smartphone and I can turn it on and go to my Wi-Fi settings. And I'm gonna choose a Wi-Fi network and I'm gonna choose Max C. So then once that is hooked up, I can leave my Wi-Fi settings, and I can go find my Maxi app. Let me go back for a second. Maxi app looks like that on your phone. <clears throat> it's a free download. 
Okay, so then we're looking at the screen of my phone where it's just pointing at my black background that I chose. And I'm going to move it over so it's looking at the matchsticks, my specimen. And then I'm just going to use my thumb to do a one finger focus here. And you can see that that shows up on the phone. So one thing you can do is just you can just view things or you can record what you're viewing by taking a picture. And I did that by pressing the camera button on the app or we come over here and just press the power button quickly on the microscope. So if I want to see what I've captured, I go to capture files and I took a photo. So go to my photos and there are several photos I've taken of my matchsticks and I can edit them right here. It's pressing edit and the only thing I can actually do here is delete. So let's say I don't like that one. It is gone. Okay, if I want to do more editing, I just go into my photo app on my phone. And then, as you can see, there's also a possibility of video. So we'll go back. We're going to take a short video with this. I find this a little finicky, but we press the video function and a little counter will come up and it just starts counting. So while I'm doing that, I can move my microscope around and focus in on different things. or look at a new sample. So I have some salt here, hanging out some salt crystals. Or I might want to go and look at a rock surface to see what minerals are in it. And that requires me to lift it up a bit and do some focus. Okay, so anywhere in there I could stop and take a picture. We'll go back to the match heads. and we'll stop the video. Okay, so to see my captured video, back to capture files, go to videos, and perhaps I wanna take a look at it, play it forward, see how my video looks, okay? So it is an extremely simple app. There's a few little features, so I can rotate 180, gives me a different view of the match matchsticks and I can play with the resolution a little bit so we have a choice of resolutions and then you just go up another thing you can do is on the back of the microscope there is a zoom in in and out function so you can just press the plus or the minus to get a closer or slightly farther picture and that's basically how are you going to use it? Some possible areas of microscope enabled inquiry include ecosystem investigations, local flora and fauna, fauna digital collections or class libraries, uh, using the microscope to improve dissections, because students often have trouble locating small features on organisms. Uh, doing forensic investigations or mock crime scenes where students can compare fibers, fingerprints, hair samples, and other evidence. And in earth science, looking at mineral crystal features and identifying um, minerals in samples of sand or rock.